Fuin tra sha, fuin chudele gun vehel irnoch ek trit choma. We could see the trace had come towards us, and uh, it was pretty, pretty horrendous. They used to go for the big gunner and the radio man. The radio man was obviously first on the list, and I was second. With the anti-tank gun, you had to stand in the open, fire it. You know, explosion like that, you're pinpointed yourself. It's highly dangerous. Charlie was the fire, I was the number two. And uh, I loaded, Charlie fired, hit the bridge. Lifton and Norton said to me, would, it, would you take another shot at the carriage? I said, on my own. He said, like, what of you come with me? <laughs> so the two of us went out, and he fired, and he got the second one. Ferguson only had four shells. So the next thing I seen, the fifth, sixth shell exploding. So I knew, other than that, Ferguson had now engaged the carriage. So when I hit the carriage, first time, silence then for it, and then on. The enemy ran away. They just ran away. And I remember shouting, I screamed, big cheer, I couldn't believe it. Because at that stage, I was sure I was going to be killed. They were still firing coming at us, because we were running up to the, to the railway station itself. We were expecting a uh, counterattack, which didn't materialise. So we're not only moving and take the tunnel then. So we took the positions up on the top of the tunnel and held it. Via Gusbordy Temple Elizabethville, Bwantia Mach Egna Solenig, Eg Kahlan Gorka Na Hind, Agus Egna Heto Bikoma. When we took the tunnel, we must have been, we were, must have been a month on it. Sentries were posted, and it got back to some sense of normality. One day, a jeep came out who we didn't, I had anti tank trained on it. They were Congolese soldiers, I didn't fire it because I'd have lost the pain killing people for nothing. So I relaxed. And, let them, let them go about their business. Were we justified in what we were doing? Yes, we were. We were under the mandate from the UN. But there was the thing that comes into your mind about peace enforcement and peacekeeping. Nor Honig Derelishen Ka, the Ocht Gomadi Shiachana Deg Marov, Agus Dina Agus Fiha Akub, Gurta Gudona. They brought me to a hospital, which was only a house, and they'd done the operation in, in the bivvyac, or a, a tent, or whatever you call it. Sergeant Paddy McCarthy was in the little bed beside me, but he actually died beside me. Kuru and Lava for Fionri are a new law deg de Vina Nolog. Father Sahonik and Realtus Katangach, Realtus Lornach and Kango. Agus na nashun ainte le chele de chainte na siachana. Mara harlia na gwivlint ar bi, di la riach anachwyd si vildig. Dyr mwynter an chango cosynt o na nashun ainte he. Hocra na solinig agus na hernig na mielta gwna dina sa avoga ag siaf fwy le, oit ar hog siad a nid an hain. I wasn't familiar with what a refugee camp was then, and I was just anything they could make a shelter with, basically that's all they used. They corrugated tins, canvas, bits of trees. Some of the houses that the Belgians had left, they'd go in and, and loot the uh, houses that the Belgians were in. Like, take the roofs off it, take the beams out of it, take the floorboards up, take everything up. These people tried to get themselves as much shelter as they could under conditions because it was the rainy season and it was gonna last for a couple of months. I mask na defoch, roi grupa og na junes, tribloid lanunach. We wanted to check whether the, when the refugees started coming that they were really refugees and not something else. Because many of, of these were not refugees. They were just out for robbing, killing people and so on. Le suis le karacha mila dina gampa na defoch. The upper war against the Trichashe of Catalan, so the Ilshi of the Walla, Dulgas Garda, Patrol, Dulgas Kudachta, Osh Vichene, Agas Love Shall Stores. Crew and Trichashachtu Catalan Gdian Congo, in Mialtana Nidag Shaskado, 
Hon a cannery nuach an kien sa rialtas lorn a Leopoldville, agus vi siachain vi comportach i reim i Katanga. Our battalion were very lucky in that uh, we were the 37th. The 30th... Second had a reasonably okay time. The 33rd Battalion had a rough time. 34th Battalion had a reasonable time. 35th and 6th Battalion were involved in heavy fighting. We arrived while everybody was catching their breath. And shortly after we departed, the 38th Battalion were in fighting again. Well, I, I did another trip with the 38th Battalion and... Uh shall we say, it was payback time. The gendarmery were driven back into what then was Northern Rhodesia, and him that were annihilated. In Anor Nibliun a Nidegh Shaska Tri, Ahean Tiog Katanga leis an Chwydela Gunfoblocht. Fi an Tiog Fos Eintaha eg Dyr Nibliuna. Fi Sokrocht Folatul Banta Maach. Honig and Ked Kahlan Ernach for Stuart and Oshun Enter, good young Congo, her an Ochtu law for the Yule Nidek Shaska. Dog the Saiduri Dernach and Congo, her an Triahu law the Vehev Nidek Shaska Kahar. A Cordera the Ports and Heron, Savartus. Certainly by the end of the Congo operation, our soldiers would have been uh, well skilled in everything they were doing. The casualty rate was high, of course. The psychological casualties were many. When you came back for a while, you were still mentally on operations overseas. And it must have been hell for people who had to live with you. A lot of young men who had never left Ireland and had no idea where they were going or what they were to do or anything else, found it difficult to cope. God love her, my wife of 48 years now, said, I used to jump out of bed every night. Where's me gun? Where's me gun? Where's me gun? And she said, it's OK, John, it's OK. It's under your pillow. What she used to do, now she, she, no, she was a, a, a school teacher. She knew nothing about the army. But I used to sleep with a hurdle under my pillow every night. That was my gun. It's OK, it's under your pillow, it's under your pillow. Your gun is under your pillow. That's the debriefing we got. I got involved with the Irish United Nations Veterans Association, which we founded because we reckoned that um, our soldiers had been adversely affected by service overseas, and we wanted to do something for them. 20 years later, we feel that we've done a lot of good. The Army had a good effect on me for some reason. I don't know why. It doesn't have a good effect on everybody. I came out, I came out of it unscathed, really. Didn't... I was fascinated with the experience we had in the Congo. I didn't think about what we achieved or didn't achieve. I just, uh, you know, I was just glad to go home and I was looking forward to going back again, but unfortunately I didn't get back again. You know, I loved it out there. I loved the six months. They were the true pioneers uh, of peacekeeping and through their courage, their dedication and their sacrifice began a proud tradition of service by the Defence Forces uh, in the cause of international peace and security, a tradition which remains today. The greatest adventure of my life. It changed my life for the better. I'm a better man because of it today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was prepared for whatever came after. You know, it, 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 uh, it's the same goal that makes a man of you. It made me grow from a, a, a gossip to a man. Health wise, any morn, you pull up your bridges. It's a good day. Whoever pulls it off that night is their problem. When I look back now and when people ask me, I always say we were extremely poorly equipped, uh, poorly uniformed, poorly provisioned. But it's funny, when you were there at that time, uh, I suppose it would be uh, too much to say that you didn't know any better, but you just made do 
with what you had and made the best of what you had. Uh, as I say, when you look back in it 20, 30, 40 years afterwards, you say, wasn't it appalling? But at least it was the start of our army becoming uh, fixed on service overseas and improving the equipment and clothing and everything else uh, necessary for proper deployment overseas. So it was a start, but we were young. It was a big adventure. We didn't care. Once a soldier, always a soldier. The things that are impressed on you as a young man stay with you forever. We'll never be anything else but soldiers. It's a pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to this house. The Irish United Nations Veterans Association is so welcome. It's good to see the blueberry. We have one of the finest peacekeeping forces in the world, and we are very, very grateful because that did not happen by accident. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens because of the efforts that have been made, made by people like you. Isn't it so important that we do remember? <laughs>